Welcome to our third installation of Coach's Corner uh, with Mitch Hancock. I'm RJ Boudreaux, and we're going to be talking this week about scheduling, uh, the importance of a, of a schedule, how to best fit it for your program, um, and to get a flow to your season. Um, just to give you guys an idea um, for upcoming topics coming up, uh, we're going to talk next about communicating with your athletes and parents, how we do that, and the importance of it. And then uh, after that, we're also going to talk about marketing 101, how to market your program and promote wrestling um, in your community. So to get things started off uh, talking about schedule, I think just a good question to ask a coach, and I'll ask this to Mitch, is who who creates your schedule? Um, solely myself, right? With, with the obviously input of our coaches. Um, I know a lot of athletic directors like handling schedules. I just, I, I don't see the purpose behind that, especially when they don't understand maybe the competition levels that you need to face or understand the sport, uh, especially if you have an athletic director who's not a huge wrestling guy, right? So I would encourage coaches out there to take ownership of your schedule and create a schedule that fits your team. So for example, I may have a really good team one year, right? And I want to schedule and, and make that schedule fitting for that team and that competition level. And I may be rebuilding or reloading the next year or next two years after that. Well, of course, I got to probably alter that schedule a little bit to make sure I meet the needs and demands of the kids on my team. So you don't necessarily want to lower the bar, but there are certain things you can do as a coach, all right, to build confidence with the, with those athletes. But there's, I'm the only person in our program that creates, creates our schedule. I think it's important that the coaches create the schedules and not the ADs. You? When you say the only one, I mean, you're going to have a conference schedule, correct? I mean, your athletic director is probably going to have something to do with that. Yeah, I mean, conference schedules obviously will be um, mandated, you know, by the conference. So obviously you have to follow those um, dates. Uh, but at the same time, um, you know, you have a conference schedule that's set, right? Um, and if you have the numbers, uh, the nice thing that you can do is you can alter which teams wrestle that conference schedule. So, you know, if you have a, a great program, you can maybe have a B team uh, wrestle a couple conference matches. Um, if you are building a program, uh, right. You, you have to allocate for those dates. Um, but there are, there are still things you can do outside of your conference schedule. Yeah, absolutely. And I'll, I'll speak to that with our program too. Um, you know, our athletic director, D Crowley at Lowell high school and I, we worked, we worked together on it. I mean, it's basically, I'm creating the schedule and kind of going with her and kind of start of the year. I'm asking her, Hey, what, what available dates do we have on these Saturdays? Um, what Fridays do we have available? Um, and then obviously, depending on what our conference schedule is, um, you know, I always ask for those Fridays because those are the prime dates when you can get people to, in your gym to, to watch your wrestlers. Um, but yeah, I take control of our schedule and she, she appreciates it, um, to be honest. Um, I, there might be some athletic directors out there that maybe want a little bit more control, but I think it's really important that the, the wrestling coach has control of his schedule for, for many reasons. Um, and we're going to kind of get into those reasons uh, right now. I think the first one that you know, that we should talk about is the, just your schedule flow, um, you know, how you how you want your schedule to look and being strategic in, in doing that. So I'll give that one up to you first. I'll just talk about maybe some things that you do to, to get the flow of your schedule the way you want it. Yeah, well, I think that's a great point. There has to be flow. There has to be continuity. There has to be certain times in a season where you want to peak your athletes. So, for example, I, uh, I start my athletes off at the beginning of the year with a tournament where I think we're going to find some success um, and sort of knock the dust off of them, right? Making sure that they find some confidence. So we typically open our, our season with a, a dual, a team dual meet tournament, um, you know, at the beginning of the year to where these guys can get several matches in and, and sort of get their, 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 their tires going, for example. Um, and then we'll start pushing the season a little bit to peak towards the middle of January, um, to where their toughest competition um, is at the end of December and then the first two, I'd say two, two and a half weeks into January. So that's their peaking phase to where we really try to get them um, their toughest competition possible. So that's when we make our trip out to Braxville. Then we come back to the CC Invitational and the CC Super Duels. And after that point, our, our guys are pretty beat up. Um, they've experienced some great competition. They've taken several losses. Um, and we know where we have to, what we have to work on after those events. And then we can just start addressing those technical issues and building up for the conference championships in the postseason. But after the middle of January, we start pulling back on our guys to build their confidence so that they're ready to go for the postseason. So 
when you speak flow, uh, that's the type of flow we have, right? We start off nice and easy and work themselves into where they're peaking, all right? And their toughest level of competition um, in a normal season, not necessarily this year, would be mid-January. Um, yeah, and I think, know, RJ, you're a lot like me. Um, you know, we see each other at a lot of the same events and same tournaments. So there's got to be a lot of like-mindedness, um, you know? So I maybe you can speak to, to how you guys schedule that. Yeah, I mean, I was, I'm almost identical um, to you, you know, and I think also kind of backing up, you know, you talked about this year, this year is just crazy. It's been, a, it's been a wreck on athletic directors and coaches, you know, doing our schedule three and four times. So um, obviously this is a typical year that we're speaking about. And I think everything that we're speaking about is relative. You know, we have two powerhouse programs. Um, so not everyone is going to manufacture their schedule the way that we do, but it's relative. Um, I know I work with some coaches in our league that don't have um, the same kind of program that we have, but they're talking about common um, levels of competition when they're trying to do that. And these, these coaches are working hard over in our area to do that. Um, so yes, I, you know, I think a big thing that I kind of focus on throughout this is individual tournaments versus dual meet tournaments. You know, and back when I was in high school and you were in high school, you, how many co wrestlers would you see get 60 some matches in a year? And that was all done by the dual meet. The dual meet was the dual meet tournament was the, the next best thing because you could get 60 matches and it was all about mat time. Um, and now I, I'm more about, and I'll get to this later, but quality versus quantity. Um, but when to do those individual tournaments and doing those strategically, um, you have to have those individual tournaments in there if you want to prepare your guys, in my opinion, for the individual state tournament. Um, so we, we try to kind of figure out where we're going to put some individuals and try to get those in there. And then we just also try to um, have some fun for our kids. But speaking to the flow, I, I would definitely start slow. Um, and then we work into it right around that Christmas time is where we start ramping up to try to get that really tough level of competition. Because what I think it does for your season is it gives you the opportunity um, in January, late January and February to really kind of start working on those individual type practices. Um, and without the competition, the level of competition, without the losses coming to some of my better wrestlers, um, there aren't those individual things to work on. And you have to kind of test your wrestlers and have things to kind of work on individually with each of those kids. So that's kind of the part of the flow. And it's, it has a lot to do with my practicing too. We talked about length of practice a couple um, videos ago. Um, and we talked about, you know, shortening up those practices towards the end of the year. And that comes for me for those individual type practices. We're putting all of our bulk and our foundation in, um, in November, December, and even in early January. And then once we get through that gauntlet that we've kind of put in January, we do Brexville, we do the DCC invite, we're wrestling Dundee and Davison and all those guys in January. Um, and then kind of in February hits, it's postseason time, things really shorten up for us. And we're kind of just getting our kids ready to peak. You know, I hear that term a lot in our program. And I know peaking is a big deal for you, too. So. Yeah, and, and I'll touch a little bit more on that. If you have a wrestler who's struggling, right? So they struggled early on. Maybe they've ran, you know, they've run into some state placers or qualifiers. And they are just struggling with finding some confidence and some wins. It's not a bad idea to send that kid down to the B team level or maybe a JV level and have them work on the things that he's confident work and have him pick up some wins. Right. So, I mean, you have to be really smart as a coach and how you juggle that. So sending a kid to the toughest tournament in the state as an individual necessarily may not help his confidence. And you can pull back on that and try and build that confidence, uh, you know, throughout the season as well. So you have to know your athletes and, and try to build their confidence as best you can without giving them a false sense of confidence to where their records are inflated and they recognize themselves that they haven't wrestled anymore. And I'll, I'll speak to that as an example right now. Um, so last year we had a, we had a wrestler, Zest Straits. Um, he, you know, is a good wrestler, um, but just was going through the gauntlet of us. And I think he was on a six or seven match loss streak. And I think five or six of them were pins. He was getting decked and he's, but he's wrestling some of the best guys in the country. Um, and I was extremely worried. Um, so we got him some competition kind of late, um, kind of early in our postseason, and it kind of got him rolling. He wins districts, he wins regionals, he makes the state finals and loses in overtime um, with 13 losses and a whole bunch of just getting pinned. And we were worried. We didn't know if he was even going to want to wrestle anymore. It was like that. But that really helped me with kind of assuring myself I'm doing the right things as far as that level of competition helped his confidence. And if kids are willing to kind of persevere and get through that, um, there's light at the end of the tunnel and that light 
man, is it refreshing. They just eat it up and they love it. Um, and it's kind of, that's a good life lesson too. You know, you're, you don't want kids getting through a season, you know, undefeated, unblemished. If, uh, if you can help it as a coach, you want, you want to make them the best wrestler they possibly can be. Um, so anything to add to that schedule flow piece? Not really. I, I sort of want to touch and get it going with, with your special events. I, I know we run an assembly match at Catholic Central at the beginning of the year for our student body. And, you know, we bring in over a thousand people and turn the lights off, get the screen down. And you've wrestled there several times. It's a, an awesome environment. It's very one-sided. Um, as well, long as the other coach and program knows that it's very one-sided, yeah. um, I think you're good to go. It promotes the sport, I think, in a positive light. But last year, you guys did the same thing, or two years ago, you do quite a few special events throughout the year. Will you talk a little bit about the special events that you put on? Yeah, before I do, I'll speak to the DCC Assembly Duel. That was my very first duel as a, um, college, a high school coach coming out of college. Um, so we talked about composure in the corner uh, in our last vlog, and I learned a lot about uh, how, why it's important. Um, so, and that's a good experience for coaches to go through is a, an experience like that. You do a, fine, a fantastic job with that assembly duel and it's kind of an historic event now. People kind of know about it and it's cool. And I think speaking of the special events, it's really on the coach. How much are you willing to put into your schedule to try to create these things? Because, you know, as I thought, I thought a lot of people would say no to them, but you'd be amazed at how many people will say yes to them, you know, and keep going until somebody says no. Um, so, you know, we do an assembly duel. We've done one every year if we can, depends on the year. But the last couple, we've done them in our auditorium and our performing arts center. Now, I know not every school is going to have that opportunity, but I saw uh, Virginia Tech do it at their, their performing arts center. I said, that looks like a good idea. And it's phenomenal. I mean, the acoustics are great. Uh, acoustics are great. The lighting is phenomenal. Um, you're able to do that. We have a DJ that comes in there. It gets cranking and loud and um, the, the crowd is right on top of the mat. It's just, a, it's a cool experience. And our kids live for that. You know, we do our exit interviews, which will probably be another, uh, another vlog podcast that we'll talk about. But the, the assembly duel is one of the biggest things talked about in our exit interviews um, by our seniors, the things that they remember the most. And some of these kids got trashed or some of these kids didn't even wrestle in it as a senior. And they're talking about that as a memorable moment in their, their, uh, their experience here with the low wrestling program. So um, that's, it's a big thing, not just for our wrestlers but and our fans, but just for the kids that are casual, uh, casual fans or casual wrestlers. It, it really helps promote the sport of wrestling. It really helps promote our program. Um, and it, it does a really, you know, it does a lot for us. Um, there's a couple other things that we do. We always try to get a pre-college duel. So we've wrestled you at the University of Michigan before. We've done that with other schools whether it's Olivet or Alma or any of the small schools, Michigan State, Central, um, we're always trying to kind of arrange those things for a multitude of reasons, right? I mean, you're wrestling in a college, on the college mat right before a college duel. You're, you're going to see the college guys after, see how they compete. So you're kind of learning a ton. And it uh, gives those kids an opportunity to kind of travel um, and, and go to a college campus and see a college campus, see some college wrestling. So that's always a, a good one to do. And I just think being creative, um, I said, you know, do it until – um, you somebody says no. So I, um, did something really creative, um, with our league duels. Um, and it's kind of changing, um, based on this year too, but, um, our okay white conference duels, we did those on Friday nights. Um, we really worked hard and I, there's so many reasons why we couldn't have done them. And every time I've talked about those at, um, different coaches clinics, uh, coaches kind of shake their head and say, no way it will happen uh, with our athletic department or with our program, or we're a basketball town. And, there's, there's a lot of different reasons people give and all the same reasons here. Um, they were all given to me, but, you know, I, I worked with some other guys, Brad Anderson of Forest Hill Central was instrumental in this. Um, and we got it done. It, and there was a lot of growing pains, but basically we wrestled our, our uh, conference um, duels on a Friday night. We had an onsite weigh-in and that weigh-in would count for the next day. And then we'd wrestle again on Saturday. So it cut out six weigh-ins out of our schedule, which is huge for our athletes. Um, and we were able to train through the week. Um, so there's a lot of reasons. And I could probably talk about that um, at length in a different um, vlog. But that's just an example of something that we do to try to be creative with these kind of special events. And it worked really well for us. I wish we could do it again. Um, but we kind of had a realignment. And it's going to take some time. You know, really and simply it was. It was it was calling all the coaches, having them over my house. I brought them over. Uh, we had some dinner and some drinks. Talked it over. I convinced them. And then we presented, presented to our athletic directors. And we got it done. You know, and there, there was, like I said, there was some growing pains, but it was worth the effort, in my opinion. I think it, it changed the sport. It changed the it changed wrestling in our area, and I think for the better. 
So um, I think we're going to move on next. Um, I, I think I'm going to go to travel next just because this is kind of a similar thing that we're talking about special events. Um, and it takes effort by a coach to create these opportunities for travel, right? So I know you guys do a lot of traveling. Mitch, just speak about why you travel, um, what your, the experiences you're looking for, the competition you're looking for, and uh, what you get out of your travel schedule. Yeah, I think it's imperative to travel, right? So, um, you know, your, your kids qualify for the state tournament, the individual state tournament, and let's say you're from Traverse City, right? Um, give them as close of a replication as you can to the individual state tournament. Um, and that speaks volumes about why you cannot wrestle, right, an entire dual meet tournament schedule, right? You're not doing your wrestlers any benefit by wrestling dual meets and only dual meets. So it's important to travel for a few reasons, right? Because at the individual state tournament, most wrestlers will travel to that event, have to spend a night, have to manage their weight properly, have to sleep in a hotel room, have to get up in the morning and, and go through that schedule. So um, we travel quite a bit. We'll travel to Illinois. We've wrestled Montini Oak Park River Forest at the beginning of the year. Um, and we also get the opportunity to do fun things with the guys. We stopped at Ch Chicago Mount Carmel, um, where the actual movie Blue Chips was recorded with Shaquille O'Neal, right? And the guys thought that was awesome. We actually played basketball in the same gym that movie was recorded because that's where their wrestling room is. Got a chance to work out there. We went to the Hancock Center, went downtown Chicago and, and was able to do some uh, uh, touring and sightseeing. So I think that was a cool environment. But then we also focused on obviously business and, and wrestling, um, learning how to manage weight properly and work out maybe the evening before weigh-ins, um, I think is a huge benefit. But what we try to do and the reason why we travel is solely and simply to replicate the individual state tournament. So if there are coaches in the state of Michigan and across the Midwest, across the country, do your best to replicate your athlete state tournament and give them maybe two practice runs throughout the year. So we went to Chicago. We had to weigh in on site each morning. We went to Braxville. We had to weigh in on site each morning. Um, and that overnight stay really does wonders in preparing them for the state tournament. And RJ, it's no surprise to you, you're at, you're at the same event. So, I mean, you, your coaching staff must have the same mindset. Absolutely. You know, um, we are pushing our kids, the, the overnight stays and waking up and working out um, is a key to, to why we travel. And I will say this, um, again, going back to the relativity, we're two premier programs um, and maybe some coaches out there would be thinking that, well, this doesn't fit my program, but it should. I think people get this idea that the competition level in Indiana and Ohio and other bordering states is too good. And it's, it's simply not true. There are weak programs, average programs in all of those states, and you can find them. You know, you can find a tournament where you can go and find that because you just want to give those kids that experience, whether how good your program is, no matter how good your program is, that car ride down, the car ride back, um, the hotel stay, those are the things that kids remember for the rest of their lives. And that you're, it's your job as a coach to kind of create those experiences for the kids. And I think you'll find that more kids will come out uh, for wrestling. You know, if you can, if you can have good experience like that, where people are talking about it when they come, come back to school, you know, it's not always about weight cutting and all those things. Wrestling's about having fun and being with your buddies um, and, and being with your families and like giving your families those experiences. So I think travel does that for us um, a lot. And our, our families get together, parents meet each other. Um, and it's just, there's so much that goes on for the betterment of your program um, that, you know, it's a, it's a really good thing. And I, and I'm going to speak to this too. Um, and going back to special events, because I kind of forgot about this, um, but involving your entire program, um, that's something that we do uh, quite a bit. Um, last year, um, we wrestled Clinton and uh, we wrestled Clinton in the same gym on uh, one mat was our middle school on um, the other mat was our elementary. So high school, middle school, elementary, all in the same building wrestling together um, program wide. Very cool. I think Clinton's whole community kind of came down. I think it's a good trip for them too. Um, so it's another special experience on top of that traveling piece um, to create for your people and, or for your for your program. And no matter how good you are, no how bad how better bad how bad you are, you can do these experiences for your kids, and I highly recommend it. So anything to uh, touch on with any more travel, Mitch? No, not so much. I, I just think it's so beneficial, and I would encourage any young coaches out there to take that experience travel into Toledo go to Illinois right just take the jump right and it may take some additional funds if your budget's not there um, but again that's what fundraising is for so 
take that step, uh, make the trip, take your families with you. If you have little ones and maybe, maybe a wife, take them with you um, uh, and allow them to enjoy the wrestling season as well. We spend so much time away from our families. That's a, a great way to get them involved. Absolutely. Good point. All right. Last, last topic we're going to talk about. We're uh, about 20 minutes. We want to get the, this thing wrapped up, but it's an important one. Quality versus quantity. Okay. We touched on it a little bit, a little bit ago, um, but I think specific to my program, um, we really focus on quality. Um, we very seldom have a kid get over 40 matches in a season. That's after team state. Um, and that's after the individual state tournament. Very rarely will we get over 40 matches. Um, if you get 40 matches, it's, it's, uh, it's because you were, you were healthy and you, and you worked really hard. And through that, um, we have very, very few kids that have made it through our season undefeated. We had a four-time state champion last year. His first undefeated season was his senior year. Um, and it was a gauntlet that he ran through. He was a phenomenal wrestler. Guys like Gabe Dean, uh, Max Dean, who are college All-Americans, um, NCAA finals and NCAA champions, never undefeated, never undefeated, um, always taking losses. And that's why they are, in my opinion, NCAA champions and college All-Americans um, because of the schedule that they kind of experienced um, and going through that. So I just think Coaches, please, I'm just begging you to consider this, um, to try to get the matches more versus quality versus quantity. So we do a lot of this. On a Saturday, we'll wrestle three duels against common, comparable opponents, all right? And our kids are done, all right? Three duels. The nice part about it, okay, it starts at noon usually. So you don't have to wake up super early for your fans. It gives you time to travel. It gives you time to kind of manage your weight if it's an on-site weight especially. Um, and it's over by 5 o'clock. You're not in a gym all stinking day. You understand what's going to happen. Um, you're wrestling quality opponents and you get out of there. Um, that's, that's just one example. So um, I don't know. You can speak on that, Mitch. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I think people know where I sit on that, right? Um, you know, quantity uh, is not as important as quality and our guys are the same way, right? If my guy hasn't experienced a loss throughout the year, I tell my guys and, and my families that I haven't done my job and finding good enough competition for them to fail somewhere throughout the regular season so that we can address what needs to be addressed prior to the state tournament. And I, and I think that's why we do pretty well at the end of the year. So um, we're always trying to find the best competition for our guys so we can expose weaknesses and weaknesses in the end will obviously provide growth. Um, so I, I think that's important. And by doing that, um, I was taught something when I first started coaching by Coach Rodriguez is to split the state of Michigan into quarters, right? So you need to make sure that you're experiencing competition from each region. So the West being one, the Northwest being two, right? Uh, Northeast being three. And then obviously um, where we're at in, in Eastern Michigan or, or where I'm at being region number four. So try to find competition in each one of those regions to where you're wrestling majority of the state prior to the individual state tournament. So in the West region, uh, when I first started coaching, Coach Rodriguez would go to the Kent County Classic. I don't know how we got into that tournament. We're not a West Coast team, uh, but we were wrestling teams like Rockford, um, East Kentwood, um, Granville, Grand Haven. And those are a lot of the D1 West Side teams that we would see at the state tournament. So um, provide the, the quality opponents for your athletes and make sure that you're touching each region so that you can see competition you'll see later in the year. Absolutely. Absolutely. So that's going to wrap it up for what we have on scheduling. Um, that was a, was a good, good blog. Nice job. Um, but we're going to be talking um, about a couple of things next week, but we want to hear from you guys. So um, if you have some ideas of what you want to hear from us, what you want to hear us talk about, please go on to the wrestlingvault.com, wrestlingvault.com and go to the contact page and, and let us know what you want to hear. Uh, but Mitch, do you have anything else to say other than that? Um, I'm going to sign off here. Yeah, and if someone sends us an idea on a topic we'll touch on, we'll send you out a free wrestling ball t-shirt. All right, so send us your ideas. Let us know what they are. And if you send us a, a topic and we touch on it, we'll, we'll send you some gear. Awesome. All right, man. Thank you, everyone, and we'll see you guys next week.